morning. Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday and welcome to this edition of the Coffee Chinwag Show. Every day this week from Monday to Friday from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. UK time, I'm talking to an amazing female entrepreneur. And the one thing they all have in common is that they have recently completed the LinkedIn Tribe Academy with me, which is an eight week program for female entrepreneurs who want to leverage LinkedIn in order to thrive. These women are all amazing experts in their own right. So on Monday, I was chatting to Dion about the uh, power of branded communications to attract your ideal client. Yesterday, I was chatting to Pauline, who is a business growth mentor, and we were chatting about the importance of mentoring in your business to get you to the next stage. Today, I'm going to have the amazing Jane Phillips up on the stage in a little while. And Jane is a business coach, and she specializes in imposter syndrome, which is something I know that affects a lot of people, including myself at times. And then tomorrow, Thursday, I will be chatting to Rosie about the power of personal branding photography, something very close to my heart. And on Friday, we're going to end up with the amazing Priscilla and we're going to be chatting about mental health and LinkedIn. So before I bring up Jane on the screen, let me know if you are attending here today. Sometimes the comments can be a bit slow and clunky with StreamYard. So do let me know if you're here. Let me know if you are watching it live or if you're on replay, where in the world you are. And if you've got any questions for Jane as I'm going along the interview with her, don't be shy. I know imposter syndrome affects so many people, women and men, professionals and business owners, and especially people on LinkedIn, it can hold them back a lot. So I'm going to give Jane a brief intro, but I will get her to say a little bit more about herself. Oh, I can see we've got the lovely Jane Summerfield has just arrived. So thank you for commenting, Jane. It's always good to know that the chat is working and that the comments are working. So I agree, it is a great topic. And the lovely Jane here, she's actually another member of the LinkedIn Tribe Academy. So great to see the ladies supporting each other. So before I bring up Jane, I just want to say that she's an amazing business coach and she helps small businesses and professionals to overcome their imposter syndrome so that they can have the confidence to grow. And in particular with business owners, it's giving them the confidence to grow their business and to earn more money. So who wouldn't want that? And Jane focuses on executive and life coaching with a particular emphasis on imposter syndrome. It affects so many people, um, women or men. And I think it actually affects more women than men. But I'll chat to Jane about that. So what Jane doesn't know about imposter syndrome isn't worth mentioning. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up the lovely Jane to the stage. So. Welcome, Jane. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Jennifer, and hello, everybody. And yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to come on and talk to everyone. I'm really looking forward to it and really looking forward to some questions as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've got questions for you, and I'm sure we're going to get questions from our audience as well. So I gave you a brief intro there. Um, I don't know if you can do a better one yourself. Do you want to tell the, the viewers today a little bit about yourself and how you've really got into um, you know, being a specialist and an expert focusing on imposter syndrome? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, you know, what was sort of, you know, interested me in coaching in, in the first place is that I actually have quite a big, um, uh, big background in the charity sector and, and raising money for the charity sector, because I've always wanted to make a difference. I've always wanted to help people. And, um, and so, you know, I spent many years doing that. And I found that I was doing more and more um, things with people on a, on a sort of one-to-one -one basis, really. So coaching almost just sort of happened organically, really. But but for me, it really is about making a difference, about leaving people in a better place than they were when I started working with them. And, um, and, I, and I think that, um, you know, to do that, to do that with individuals, because obviously if you're working with a charity or you're, you're working with people who perhaps have a specific issue, specific problem maybe, but there are so many of us who would benefit from help, um, to help them with their confidence, um, help them build their self-esteem, help them build their business as well, because I do a lot around business strategy um, as well. And, um, and, and the thing is that imposter syndrome 
is such a part of, important part of that because it it affects our confidence. It, it, you know, it's affected by our confidence. It's affected by our self esteem, and and so, you know, it just I think has become you know very very important. And um, it became quite obvious to me that the people I was working with, this was something that made a big difference to them and that was really relevant to people. And that's why I have chosen to specialise in that subject. And everybody that I talk to, you know, when I start to describe it, they say, oh, that's me, that's yeah. me, I do that, I think that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's an amazing niche and I think it affects so many people, whether they admit to it or not. And, you know, even, you know, really successful entrepreneurs who could be making seven, eight figures, they get imposter syndrome now and again. I think especially when you're starting something new, it can feel a bit scary and you kind of can block yourself or overthink it or procrastinate. And I think only by taking action, in my experience, is how you get confident. But of course, when you're not confident, it's hard to take that action. So yeah, it's a bit of a loop. Um, so I'm going to dive into the first question. I'm just going to actually bring up a comment from Rosie on the screen. So she says, perfect topic for me as I'm doing some work on my personal brand. So thanks for attending, Rosie. And uh, the first question I want to ask you is, why do you think imposter syndrome is such an important topic? Yeah, um, and and it really is for a number of reasons. I mean, first of all, as, as you mentioned, you know, imposter syndrome affects so many of us. You know, it, it affects virtually everybody at some point. Yeah in time at some point or other. Um, so a lot of us, you know, we don't feel imposter syndrome all the time. We don't feel it every day, yeah. but there will always be times that that it, it happens. You know, they they say, you know, you do see different percentages. You know, I've seen as many as, as 90% of women um, experiencing imposter syndrome and um, and 80% of men, which oh, I'm sure we'll talk about yeah, a little, little bit later. But the trouble with imposter syndrome, you know, you have people who start to experience it and can cope with it, they can tame it, they can manage it, and it doesn't stop them from doing what they want to do. It doesn't stop them from, you know, really grasping those opportunities. And I'm sure that, you know, everybody listening, everyone will have been in a situation where there's a really good opportunity and they've wanted to go for it and they just haven't. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you can overcome your imposter syndrome, if you can learn how to manage it, you can stop missing those really good opportunities. You can get on and do the things that you have to do. Because you're quite right. It's it's doing the things. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it can really open up so much for people. So, yeah, I, I, I just think it's so important, so important for people. Yeah, and I think, it, to be honest, I think it's a case for me, it's always like a case of feeling the fear and going for it anyway. And, you know, a lot of times I'm an introvert. So even showing up on a video for me, when I started my LinkedIn live show last year, I felt like such an imposter. Like I got the license to go live, I think it was back in March 2020. And at that time, LinkedIn were saying, OK, you've got 30 days to enable LinkedIn live. Um, after that's taken away and I was like oh my god I actually got it and I think I procrastinated for practically that 30 days I probably went live the first time after about 28 days uh because I just thought you know who am I to have my own show I'm not a, a TEDx style speaker what am I going to talk about I had massive blocks and uh two um LinkedIn trainers, communicators over in the US and Ireland kindly kind of took me under their wings and one got me on his show. Um, Russ John's an amazing guy over in Texas. And then another guy showed me the back end of StreamYard. So I became more confident. And I think my initial reservations was the tech, really. You know, how am I going to get this tech to work? And then it was kind of like, what am I going to say? But it was only by taking action did it become that a little bit easier and easier and easier so now what I do if I'm ever presented with an opportunity if I get an email about something and my initial reaction is oh my god I don't really want to do that I say yes anyway mm -hmm. and then I just psych myself up so I just always go yes <laughs> even though my head could be screaming no I don't want to do this you know whatever but then I just kind of you know psych myself up and learn how to do it so by the time it gets around to doing it 
it's actually not that painful. So. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, that's amazing because, you know, um, people who are really suffer with their imposter syndrome tend to sit in their comfort zone all the time. But the problem is that, you know, you, unless you go into your stretch zone, you know, you don't you don't challenge yourself. You don't grow. You know, you um, you don't become that interesting, vibrant person, you know. So, yeah, you, you have to be brave, don't you? And, and just yeah. put your hand up and say yes. And even if you're inside, you're going, no. <laughs> yeah and just let like give yourself the, the time and space to learn about it because knowledge is power and I think initially a lot of the fear can be just a lack of knowledge on something and then when you learn how to do it for example yesterday um I had the amazing Pauline on and it was her first LinkedIn live and you know she will openly admit she was slightly terrified before it and she absolutely rocked it she was amazing so it was that kind of when you're doing something new for the first time it can feel like super scary and then when you do it you're kind of like is that it <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> I'm gonna jump on to your second question mm -hmm. So you might have a few tips. So I was going to say, what is your top tip to fight imposter syndrome? And if you've got a few, share away, because I think this is really valuable. Yeah, I mean, gosh, there are there are so many tips. There are so many tips. And and um, what, what I've actually done is I've, I've devised a seven step system, um, which is part of my um, imposter syndrome course. So I work through the seven steps if I work for people one to one and also people who, who follow my course go through those those seven steps and within each step there's there's more tips so there's loads and loads of things that that people can do to help themselves and it's almost like gathering a, a toolkit a toolbox that works for them because you know we're not the same we're all different we all we all experience imposter syndrome in different situations and we will exhibit certain behaviors um differently to other people as well um, so from that, people can sort of cherry pick the tools that work best for them. But, you know, I think one of the most important things to remember is that, you know, everybody feels like that at some time. You know, when you think, when your inner voice is saying, you can't do that, yeah. you, you're not good enough, people are going to laugh at you, people are going to think you're silly. You know, um, what happens with people who have imposter syndrome is that they're never able to break away from that. So it's so I would suggest that people remember that, you know, everybody feels that even the most successful people feel exactly that when they do something for the first time. And in actual fact, imposter syndrome is um, it, it and it actually shows itself very in a very common way, actually, if for, for people who are high achievers, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, it's very common for high achievers. So people who really are at the top of their game, people who are running their own business, um, elite athletes, people involved in sales, people who feel, you know, under pressure. Um, so, you know, it's, it's good to remember that, you know, that everybody feels exactly as you know you're feeling right now so I think that's my first tip is just to, to stop and remember that and you know even if you have to have something written on your desk a little you know note yeah. um, to remind yourself of that yeah absolutely and um, one of my other tips is um, to phone a friend <laughs> um, but choose your friend carefully yeah. We all have our support networks. And um, traditionally, I think, you know, you know, in our early years, you know, we will have had, you know, a friend and, a, 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 you know, a parent, perhaps, or a relation, um, perhaps, a, a, you know, a work colleague. But as time goes on, we don't necessarily have the right people in our support network. You know, we want people who are really supportive of us, people who want to see us excel, people who are understanding and encouraging, um, people who inspire us and, and motivate us, you know. So, um, you know, so, so if you've got somebody like that, if you've got a really good support network, then phone somebody um, who will be who will be honest with you without being cruel because what they'll actually say to you is you know what you can do this you know you've got the confidence you've got the knowledge um and so you know i think you know phoning phoning a friend someone in your support network is is really important sharing how you feel about imposter syndrome often minimizes the effect that it has on you you know call it out <laughs> yeah, i love that yeah, yeah. I love that about having people in your corner as well, because I know when I was in corporate, 
Um, I used to be a PA and within my company, I didn't feel like massive support and I didn't feel like there was a clear kind of a fast track to success for me in my job. And there wasn't like a, a company kind of a mentorship program or anything like that. So I joined a career club at the time for professional women and meeting those women from all over. Um, it was actually all over London, to be honest, and then Kent, Middlesex, sorry, all around the mm -hmm. southeast. That really widened my network. And then I found role models to aspire to, inspiring women, motivating women. And that helped to fast track me. And I think now as a business owner, I constantly need coaches like yourself, Jane, and and yesterday, Pauline for Business Grow and Monday, Dion. Um, she's a brand consultant and a coach as well, to keep me um to get over that imposter syndrome and to keep to give me that forward momentum and I personally know as a business owner when I kind of step away from a coaching program whether it's one-to-one -one or a group for a few months my mojo dips because I'm not getting that you know confident reinforcement of you can do it you can do it you can do it so I think what you've said is like super <laughs> um valuable I'm just going to highlight one of the um, some of the comments here. We've got Kerry. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Kerry or sorry? I'd say Kerry. So useful to hear. Great tips and suggestions. Thank you. And Rosie is also saying, interesting to hear it is seen widely in high achievers. Yeah, and I have read something about that, Jane. Maybe I was you bring myself, but I thought it was uh, high achievers and high intellect. Did I make that up? <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. You know, that 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 as well. That's right. Okay, so there you go. If you've got imposter syndrome, hi, you know, where it's good stock. And isn't it funny how the people who, you know, probably are the most accomplished and the high achievers are the hardest on themselves? And I know I've definitely been guilty of that in the past. Sometimes you can be your own worst critic and your own worst enemy. So over the over the years, like true coaching and mentoring I've learned I don't do it the whole time I hold my hands up but learn to speak to myself as I would to a friend so I kind of reframe things and go would you be so hard like what if you were your friend what would you say to yourself because yeah we can be um really hard on ourselves so it's going to spotlight another comment from Kerry totally agree that sometimes you have to source your own network and coaching if you don't get it from your organization yeah exactly because I feel quite stuck but then when I joined that network of professional women, it just really opened my eyes and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today in business. I wouldn't have had that confidence to kind of progress in my career and then quit my career and do this if I hadn't have found that network. So, yeah, that is amazing. So I'm just going to go on to another question and then I'll come to some more comments. Um, have you experienced imposter syndrome on LinkedIn, <laughs> Jane? Oh, well, yes. Yes. I mean, actually, you, you see it or rather you don't see it. And what I mean by that is, and, yeah. and Jennifer, you know, you say this, there's lots of people who are in on LinkedIn, but they don't do anything. You yeah. know, they are they're just watching, you know, they're just reading the posts. They're not engaging. They're not liking. They're certainly not commenting. Yeah. Um, and they're not connecting with people either. And, you know, so so classically you know people are not doing that because they're thinking well if I make a comment you know somebody might be nasty they might say well that's a stupid comment um I might show myself up um you know they they are reluctant about contributing and you know LinkedIn is a real sort of classic classic place where you see that because it's only a tiny percentage of people who are actually you know engaging in LinkedIn, yeah. you know, who are giving, who are giving value, you know, who are, who are um, giving information, sharing their knowledge, you know, and yet, you know, um, nobody knows everything. Yeah. Absolutely nobody knows everything. You know, even, you know, an expert still has things to learn. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things that is really useful to remember is that just because you don't know everything about um, a particular subject or about a particular topic, um, that doesn't make you an imposter. Yeah. It really doesn't. It makes you normal. You know, you know the saying, oh, well, you know, they're only human. It's because people are saying, oh, well, you know, they made a mistake or they didn't get that right. Oh, they're only human. And we are. We are only human. Yeah. <laughs> it's really normal to make mistakes and get things wrong. But a lot of people feel that um, if they don't achieve success in their eyes, 
then they don't they don't succeed they're not they're no good and you know we all achieve success we all rate success in different ways for some people it's um it's getting a job done on time for some people it's fine if a job overruns that's not a problem as long as they work really hard at it um for some people um a job could be late but it was perfect when it arrived you know so and it's when we don't meet our own expectations that we um, feel that we are, you know, imposters, that we're not succeeding, that we're, we're not good enough. Yeah. Whereas as far as other people are concerned, we are good enough and what we're doing is brilliant and, and what we're doing is really great. That's, I, lo I love that. And uh, I remember reading something years ago, some stat about even women applying for a new job. I think, you know, most women would put off applying unless they had like 90% of the skills or nearly 100%. Um, so we can be our worst enemy, like I said, and on LinkedIn, what you said about the people kind of looking on, you know, at the moment, there are 774 million members on LinkedIn and roughly only 1% of those members are showing up, being brave, creating their own original content. And there's about 9% roughly who are commenting. So just sharing simple comments like you amazing women today and funnily enough we have all new women on this live but uh, if there's any men listening just let us know as well but yeah the fact that you're commenting today on this linkedin live means you're actually in the top 10 percent of engagers on linkedin and you mightn't think of yourself like that but there are so there's like 90 percent roughly of people just looking on sitting in the sidelines afraid of judgment or making a mistake and i just want to say look I was like that back in the day. I didn't think LinkedIn was for me. I wasn't a, a CEO at the time or a, in, you know, in the C-suite. Um, I thought you had to be like a, a corporate man in a gray suit. And I was like, what will I have to say? I'm not an expert like Jane mentioned, but everybody has the right to have their voice on LinkedIn. It's massively changed over the last 18 years. And now it's the number one personal branding platform in the world. So you can be, I know amazing students on um LinkedIn, a shout out to a girl called Amna, who's 15. She's absolutely rocking it. You know, you can be an executive on LinkedIn or a business owner, um, small companies, sole traders, up to large corporations. You know, everybody's got a place now. And it's just a case of you finding your voice and your message. And I think when you have a, a message that is bigger than you, like Jane mentioned at the very start, she wants to make a positive impact that's what she's all about and helping people in their journey. When you kind of bear something like that in mind and think, well, what is my purpose? What is my message to the world? Then you kind of take yourself out of it and it becomes a lot less cringy <laughs> and you're more inclined to show up because that purpose is spurring you on. So I would say, if you are kind of blocking yourself on LinkedIn, dig deep and, and think, what, what are the things you're passionate about? So for me, I'm passionate about mental health. So I'm chatting to Priscilla on Friday about it. I'm passionate about imposter syndrome, which is why I'm chatting to Jane today. So it's about you digging deep and figuring out what is important to you, because that will spare you on and get you over it. And we all have that fear of judgment and making a mistake, but it's only by making mistakes that you um succeed and i'm just going to grab a quick card i know jane will know this card i've showed it a few times before I, hopefully you can see this so balls to it i know it's a bit rude but balls to it embrace failure is how you get shit hot okay that is the only way you will succeed so success could have a zillion failures before it and you will have heard the stories of people like you know walt disney jk rowling how many times were they told no before they got the final yes so it's, you know don't be afraid to fail because as jane said we're only human um oh it's great we've got actually i'm going to just show a quick comment here on the screen um the amazing pauline who did a live with me yesterday if you haven't seen that you can check that out on my company page from my super connector we were chatting about business growth mentoring so she's saying really interesting comments about linkedin imposter syndrome jane it took me years to be confident about posting on linkedin and now pauline is amazing she tells great stories so do check her out connect with her follow her um and look at her content mm -hmm. oh we've got a man so i'm just going to bring up a comment here from peter i know peter because i know him from a pilot network resilient pilot and Peter's saying, great advice in session. I've been through imposter syndrome and found, as Jane said, it's more me setting too high expectations of myself, which isn't what others expect. And of course, as a pilot, 
you know, and funnily enough, Pauline that I just spotlighted as a pilot as well, I didn't know. So you will have had to do so many exams and be such a high achiever to actually be, I know I'm a bit cheesy, flying high in the sky. So isn't it funny um, how it really affects the high achievers? <laughs> but I think also, Jennifer, what, what I'd add to that is that, you know, I, I do believe everybody has something to share. Everyone has something to give. But not only that, that everybody needs to hear what, what you say the way that you say it, yeah. you know, because we're all different and we all connect differently. So there's always somebody out there who will need to see, need, need to hear what people say. So, you know, it is lovely to see more and more people engaging on LinkedIn. It's really good. Yeah. And we actually chatted about this um, before we came on live. You know, we, I said, oh, Jane's actually gone. Don't worry. She had a tech difficulty earlier on and I'm sure she'll come back in as well. But we were actually saying, you know, on a live, it's actually OK if you make mistakes and we are only human. And actually, if people see me, she's coming back now. And people see me. <laughs> Don't worry, Jane. Well, we love <laughs> of tech. This happened earlier. But I was just saying we were chatting before about lives. And, you know, sometimes it's quite comforting when you do see people make mistakes so like for example this week on Monday when I was introing the lovely Dion I got her surname wrong I got a bit tongue-tied and yesterday with Pauline's one I got a little bit tongue-tied for a sentence or two and I think that makes other people go well if she's getting it wrong it's not the end of the world and maybe I can get it wrong you know I don't profess to be Terry Wogan <laughs> I wish I was good as him but I'm not and I think you just have to stay in your own lane like Jay was saying and do what you can and we don't have to be the ultimate expert if we can have one other person with our knowledge that is good enough and I used to think oh god I have to 100% or whatever and then another coach said to me you know 70% or 80% is good enough and, and as Jane said earlier, other people won't know that you're not giving your 100%. They will think your 70% is amazing. So um, I wonder why are we all so hard on ourselves? <laughs> we, we are. We are very, very critical. And that is that is the problem with imposter syndrome, that we do expect too much. And we, we, we should treat ourselves the way we would treat our best friend. Yeah. I was going to say to you, just before we wrap up, um, and I will be asking Jane for her best contact details, but I was going to say, can you give us like a quick example of the type of people that you have worked with? So either professionals or business owners, just because I know there's a lot of people listening here today and they might think, oh, uh, Jane's amazing, but she's not for me. She helps other people because they have imposter syndrome. What are the types of people that you've helped in the past? Yeah, well, it's a real range, actually. Um, so I've worked with with chief execs, people who, you know, you look at them and you think, yeah, you are so successful, you know, doing really well, but feeling like they are a failure, you know, in, in their life because, you know, being the head of the company, they're having to do everything, but they're having to bring in all the work. You know, they're responsible for their employers, their employees' livelihoods. The pressure is immense. And, you know, um, it's, it's a chap called Robert that I worked with, and he was actually worried that, you know, his um, his employees would see through him, that his um, his wife might leave him because he wasn't good enough. You know, so we worked with him. I worked with him on a one to one basis and we looked at, you know, his self-belief and, and things like that. And that made a massive difference. But I've also worked with um, people who are, are aspiring to step up to be a, the man, a manager and then people who have just moved in perhaps to their first management position, because that's a really scary place to be. And people who are single entrepreneurs as well. You know, when they're when they're on their own, when, yeah. you know, it's quite lonely and you doubt yourself as well. Um, and, you know, so people who are perhaps working in finance, um, people who are working in sales, people working in funding. Actually, you know, I mean, because it affects everybody, you know, you, yeah. I, I can help whatever, um, you know, whatever line of work that they're in. Great. I was going to say, um so when you typically work with somebody, uh, if it's one to one, is it like a long program? Is it like working together with them for 12 months or do you do shorter periods like a month or three months? The, the truth is that it's um, everybody's different. So it does yeah. it does vary. 
But the the reality is that unless people practice the tools that I yeah. give them, then it, it won't work. So if people are not practicing, it's going to take them longer. But if they take the time to practice the exercises that I'm that I give them to do and to incorporate some of those into their life, then um you know that that makes a difference now I've I've got one lady who's doing my course at the moment and I think she did the first module and she said I feel I'm feeling better already I'm beginning to feel you know that I can really achieve so you know right from the beginning you can start to see that yeah yeah I can I can make a difference brilliant and I was going to say we're actually at the 30 minutes now so I'm just wondering what is the best way for people to get in contact with you if they need help with their imposter syndrome and there is no better lady to help them so Jane what's your preferred kind of mode of communication yeah. best thing to do is drop me an email so it's jane at janephillipscoaching.co.uk brilliant and yeah. yeah of course pack you know connect with jane on linkedin reach out to her now you can send her a dm there um on her profile you'll see your email as well if you, if you kind of forget what it is so i just want to say thanks a million for coming on today uh it's such an important topic and thanks for everybody who has viewed today we really appreciate you dropping in and thanks peter for being brave to be the first man to kind of pip up because like as Jane said it does affect men and women and I think it's one of those kind of secret shames that we all have that we don't talk about which doesn't make any sense really you know um and hopefully it's something we can talk about more openly in the future I think a bit like um mental health as well like in the last 10 years there was a bit more um visibility and people are talking about it more so you know, I really think we need to chat about imposter syndrome because it can hold us back. And it's such a shame when it does, isn't it, Jane? Because you're not ever reaching that true potential. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you don't want people to look back and, and think, I wish I'd done that. I wish yeah. I'd had the courage to do that. So, yeah. Well, Absolutely. thanks a million. So um, I, I know your time is precious. And I just want to say to everyone, I am doing another one of these tomorrow at 11 a.m. So tomorrow is going to be rosy and we're going to be chatting about the power of personal brand and photography. Friday is going to be a chat with Priscilla about mental health. And we're going to chat about mental health on LinkedIn. If you've missed any other lives this week, as we have the lovely um, Pauline on, she did a live yesterday about business growth and then on Monday we had Dion and she was chatting about the importance of personal branded communications to attract your ideal clients so thanks a million I'm just gonna end on a high note <laughs> and put this over from Peter great great advice and session I've been chewing imposter syndrome I found as Jane said it's more you know setting those high expectations fantastic thank, thank you. you Jane thank you everyone and thank we'll you Jennifer <laughs> Take care. <laughs>